the lunatic is on the grass. The lunatic is on the grass. Remember Chemtrails, what are they? Chemtrails are those white lines you see in the skies that don't fade away. Instead, they linger and expand in the atmosphere. So, what are they spraying in our skies? Chemtrails contain a mixture of aluminum, barium, strontium, and other heavy metals and toxins. But for purposes of this video, we will concentrate on barium and strontium. In the medical field, strontium has been used in X-ray spectroscopy because of its properties which absorb into cellular and bone material in order to give doctors more accurate X-ray imagery of the human body. Now let's look at barium. If you've had a nuclear scan in the hospital, you remember having to drink a chalky barium milkshake. Barium travels through the alimentary system and absorbs the radiation emitted from the x-ray to give doctors an enhanced image being produced by the scan. It absorbs the radiation. So, we have both strontium and barium, both used in the medical field for their ability to absorb radiation to produce enhanced medical scans. These two elements that we know are in chemtrails will perform the same effect when sprayed into our atmosphere. They will act as what's known as getters, heavy metals that actually attract and absorb radiation. Only the radiation that they're getting are not low-level x-rays we receive in a hospital while undergoing a nuclear scan. They are absorbing radioactive cesium, plutonium, and uranium. Now consider that they are dumping upwards of 20 million tons of this material into our atmosphere. Researchers, of nu researchers and nuclear professionals are telling us that Fukushima is much worse than Chernobyl. Worse, in fact, that these estimates go as far as putting the Fukushima disaster at 50 to 100 times the radiation release at Chernobyl. Why are they saying that? Well, the first and obvious reason is that Chernobyl was one reactor and it was entombed shortly after the incident. Fukushima was four reactors, including a MOX fuel reactor, and no meaningful measures have been taken regarding cons containment. An uncontrolled, uncontained, open-air fission process is ongoing at Fukushima. This radiation has been spewing into the atmosphere for the past year and a half, where it's been coming into contact with chemtrails, which act like a radiation sponge. NASA has also patented a process for geoengineering or chemtrailing which they are now using called ice nucleation. Put very simply, ice nucleation is a process by which NASA has developed a way to combine particulate matter in the atmosphere. You know, the stuff they're spraying, including the barium and the strontium, to cohesively bond to water particles and freeze at higher than normal temperatures in which ice crystals normally form in the atmosphere. This is one of the reasons why we are seeing snow well above 32 degrees. Also, the frozen atmospheric particulate and water form much larger, larger frozen condensation masses that fall to Earth in the form of snow and hail. Do you see where this is going? A recently published study in the Journal of Environmental Radioactivity confirms that the radioactive fallout from the Fukushima nuclear disaster has already reached Europe, including plutonium, the most deadly man-made element in existence. According to the study's authors, the radionuclide concentrations measured indicate there was a long-range air mass transport from Japan across the Pacific, North America, and the Atlantic Ocean to Central Europe. The air mass transports they are referring to is the jet stream. What this means is that every region under the jet stream, which includes half of the planet, 
north of the equator has been exposed to some degree of plutonium, cesium, and uranium fallout, a fact that is now being compounded by chemtrailing, a fact that is all the more disturbing when we consider that there is no such thing as a safe level for plutonium. Plutonium does not dissipate like the media pundits would have you believe. Here's what we're looking at. The half-life of plutonium-239 is 24,000 years. The half-life of uranium-238 is 4.4 billion years. That's older than the planet. Because of chemtrailing, the radiation contamination falling to the ground is now being exponentially increased. As if the fallout being carried by the jet stream was not enough to cause concern, we now have the chemtrailing effect, which is concentrating the radiological contamination, or fallout, descending on us in the form of rain, snow, and hail. Who gave these maniacs permission to spray over 20 million tons of this crap into our atmosphere anyway? Did they ask you? I know they didn't ask me. And what's the response from the collective of morons we have in Washington? Oh, I'm not aware of any such phenomenon, or chemtrailing is just another conspiracy theory, or any other lame excuse they can come up with to dismiss the problem and not address the issue. The ecological damage, human health hazards, and overall negative versus positive effects being done by chemtrailing has been well documented but we are now facing a new clear and present danger. Chemtrailing is exacerbating the fallout contamination in the Northern Hemisphere. You can't tell me that the scientists, corporations, and governments involved in chemtrailing are not aware of these facts. You can't tell me that these entities aren't aware that they are increasing the kill rate by continuing to spray throughout the jet stream after the Fukushima disaster by amplifying the mutagenic effects of radiation exposure and amplifying the terminal effects of prolonged radiation exposure. People, this shit has got to stop. It's obvious we cannot get our elected officials to act in the best interests of the people, of humanity. So I would ask the pilots of these planes doing the chemtrailing that take off every day and land every day, refuse to fly. To the workers in the hangars, refuse to load the canisters containing these toxins on the planes. To the insurance companies that insure these aircraft so they can fly, cancel their policies. And to the employees of Project Cloverleaf, and other organizations involved in atmospheric geoengineering find other employment. Thank you for watching and please share these videos. Are you still sleeping? Are you awake yet?